this technique in detail and if you're not sure at any stage just put your hand up and we'll and i'll go through it and then we you'll hopefully be able to apply it to the question in the assignment so what we have is a situation where we've got some sort of fixed point here that's what this represents and a spring attached to it and some mass and the mass is able to move in this direction if i apply a force f look so i'm applying a force to this mass to try and pull it out that way and that's obviously going to extend the spring so there's going to be a force going the other way to try and stop that thing moving and the force that's trying to stop this mass moving is given by Hooke's law as you know F equals kx where k is the spring constant so the bigger k is the stiffer the spring and if you think about the graph then as we've discussed already the gradient of this line tells us the stiffness of the spring the elastic modulus Young's modulus so if I found if I want to know what k is I'd plot a graph of force against extension and then find the gradient wouldn't I okay what I want to focus on that now though is this bit the area what happens if I extend this spring, if I move this mass from here outwards, from this point outwards, and I, I'm doing work to it, and as Kieran said, that would actually equal the energy that's being stored in it. So this, en this work that I'm doing is being stored as energy in this spring here. How much work is done extending this spring from this point to this point on the graph? it's given by the air underneath the curve and to find the air underneath the curve we integrate the function what is the function this f equals kx so to get the air underneath the curve I integrate kx k is a number the spring constant so k is just a constant x is our variable so it's exactly like the first one in here look where the power is 1 x to the power 1 and a is the spring constant so this is a perfect example kx here is exactly like that first one to the power 1 can you see that so a would be k and n would be 1 so in this example if I want to integrate this function I find the area underneath this curve and what does that area tell me the work so I can come up with a new function to tell me the work what do I get if I integrate kx using that first rule what do we do what does this tell us to do add one to the power and divide by the new power so if we apply that to this, what's the power? So add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. kx squared over 2, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, plus c. So we now have a new function for the work. Let's just repeat that for you so you've got it because this is what you're going to be doing in the assignment effectively I'm giving you a function here it is f equals kx this is something to find the force that we ex uh, we're putting onto the spring what does the force equal the spring constant times x which is the distance I've extended it now by integrating this function integrating kx I get this and this integral gives me the area of the curve what does the area represent the work done as we've discussed already so I've got a new formula to find the work it's that kx squared over 2 the trouble with this formula is I can't use it as it stands because I don't know what C is so let me just explain what I mean by that in a bit more detail if I were to plot on an autograph y equals kx squared over 2 plus c y equals kx squared over 2 plus c 
and I get a curve. That's the function. x squared is telling me it's a quadratic. It's a square. So this is a graph showing the work done. So if I want to, ex if I want to look at um, how much work is done extending the spring from, from one position to, to another, say from one to two, I'd find the area underneath the curve here between one and two, and that would tell me the work done. The trouble is, I need to know what k and x are, k and c are. Well, k is a spring constant, so I can find that, but c is the problem. If I change c, look what effect it has on the curve. It means the curve just moves up and down. If I add c, I'm just adding a number. So if I want a curve for my particular uh, situation, I need to know what the value of c is so I can fix this curve and then I can work out correct values for the work done. So I need to calculate what c is. And to do that, I take particular values. If I knew what work, what force was required to extend into a particular distance, then I could put that point in on the curve and that would fix it. I would know the curve would have to pass through that point so then I could find out what c was. And I could do it using autographs, say. So let's see what we do to do that in this situation. How we find C. So I'll stop this video here and then we'll look at how we find C.